Hello and welcome once again to my YouTube channel. In this video, uh, we'll be once again keeping up with the history of Mesoamerica, that is Belize, Lower Mexico, Honduras and Guatemala, basically along the Yucatan Peninsula. Now, before I go on, I'd like to thank all my subscribers and those who join me for the first time. If you like what you hear, please hit the subscribe button. As we go along, these sets of videos is to show the untold story of Native Americans, basically the ones who formed civilization in Central America and South America, but basically the ones that we now are translating their writing who are the man and how they came to being and how they did what they did because of the climate and where they lived. Some lived on the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula, Guatemala, Honduras, but a lot of their cities was also inland. Uh, within the rainforest. This story is 300 years later, roughly 342 BC. It's a story of a young girl. First story of a female, being that the other two were of stories of was traders along the coast, along the barrier reef. Now, in this story, we learn something more about the man people and why they did what they did and what were the consequences of breaking some of their laws, especially for young men. Reluctantly, Sheba climbed up on the rocks by the side of the stream. She dried herself off and replaced the gold covering her genitals and tied a string around her wrist. Much later, between the cracks in the palmetto walls of her house, she watched the magnificent procession of the Lord of Tikal. Her town chief, Ahu Bokaroko, was dressed in his finery as befitting a vassal of the Lord on the periphery of the political organization of the area. The visiting royal Lord of Tikal wore a jaguar's head and a feathered headdress of the Quetzal bird denoting his high rank. The warriors surrounding him in the possession had their war regalia on, with leather shields on a wicker framework, spears, axes, bows, arrows. Walking behind came lesser individuals in a long line. Inside the dark shadows of the hut, Seba could hear a mother making ready the calabashes of food, which was the allotment assigned to this house of her father. Sheba had already filled a clay jug with wine decorated with writing for special occasion, she would ha which she would have had to carry out to the visitors at the command from the Narcom. First, there would be some rituals and sacrifices to the gods, which would take at least an hour. She supposed that the three young men from the other side of town that had been causing trouble with an older man who had no woman and was finding his life difficult because of a leg injury would be killed at dusk. The girls had been talking about it down by the stream. A big pile of stones had been built in the ceremonial plaza and three stakes set in the ground. The old men of the council and the Ahub did not tolerate teenage disobedience and hooligan action such as rowdy young men were always killed to teach obedience and set an example to others of public behavior. It was the annual visit of the senior regional lord from Tikal. The town had known he was coming because runners had arrived yesterday to give the warning. She didn't know why he was coming this way, because 
the gossip was that the procession had proceeded from Dikal in the Petan to Yaksal and then Iksan to the southwest of Karakol in Belize. A fairly straight journey, according to the gossip, she had overheard the men talking about last evening. Usually the Lord Tikal visited a vassal state in this area by going to the north of Tikal. Sometimes he went southwest to March, Jaquila, Aqueta, Dos Pilas, Cerbal, Polo, Esemete, Tayasal, before returning to Tikal. This visit was strange. She could sense the uneasiness of the town leaders. The date was 342 BC, in what is known as the pre-classic era, when Karakol was a vassal state of Tikal. Now, I'm going to end that story there, right now. The man had a form of what we call in England ASBOs, antisocial behaviour orders. Basically, they did not tolerate teenagers being antisocial to older men or older families and if there were they would be made an example of now that example would be they would be sacrificed and that is surely is one is one of the most extreme form, form of uh, antisocial behaviors in history so what will we learn in this video? In the previous video, we know that when men travel from village to village, when traders travel expect, you know, from village to village, they will seek out people of this same surname, hoping that because of the family connection, they would give them food and shelter. Secondly, when they move to uh, a new town or new island or new village or set up a new town anywhere the women would break all the pottery as a sign of renewal in this video we learned that breaking the laws in man's society result in severe punishment human sacrifice in a later video we'll talk about another reason behind the human sacrifices and why they did what they did i'm going to leave it there for now and if you are intrigued about the main history of Meso mesoamerica then please hit the subscribe button and i will see you in the next video